Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes the star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents one of the best-loved musicals of all time. Jerome Kern and Otto Harbach's unforgettable Roberta, starring Gordon McRae and his two guests, Ginny Sims and Edna Best. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we're bringing you the charming and tuneful Roberta. I'll be a fellow named John. Ginny Sims will be the lovely Stephanie. And Edna Best is Roberta. And so we're off for autumn in Paris and the salon of the world's most famous fashion designer, Madame Roberta. Stephanie, where are you? Right here, Madame Roberta. <laughs> Look, another letter from my nephew, from John. You know, for a football player, he's a very romantic boy. Is he handsome? Oh, yes, Stephanie. In America, you have to be handsome to play football. It's required. <laughs> <laughs> you know, John is the only relative I've ever liked. I suppose I wish deep down that instead of spending my life becoming a fashion designer, I'd spent my life Raising a son like John and a daughter like you. When is your nephew arriving? <laughs> he doesn't say. There's just a copy of a song, and there's a note on it. Dear Aunt, this song will tell you why I am coming to Paris. The girl I'm in love with has, has just, just arrived, arrived there, there, and, and I'm, I'm coming after her. her. This song will describe her to you. Your So far above me to think of mating, I never could dare. You couldn't ever be lonely and love me. You're much too. Destined for purple hue, brown rooms. You were fashioned for princess to see. Still, I keep dreaming of you in my own room. And there you whisper. Uh... 
And there you I'll be seeing you sooner than you think. I want you to meet my girl. I want you to see personally how devastating she is. Oh, you see, Stephanie, I told you that I had a romantic nephew. My, that's a lovely song. Why, why, Madame Roberta, you're crying. Oh, darling, no. I just look at you and I think of when I was young, so many yesterdays ago. You're still the most beautiful woman I've ever known. Oh, 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 Stephanie. Forgive me. Memory is the nicest companion when it's autumn. It gives you such courage. Just remembering all the golden days. Come along. Sit by me. Sing to me. Help me to remember. All right, Madame Roberta. Yesterday. Yes. Happy, sweet sequester days, golden days, golden days, days of mad romance and love. Madam Roberta? Nothing. Nothing, dear. Maybe too many memories. They're not good for the heart, you know. Would you see who's in the shop, please, Stephanie? Of course. Who is it, Stephanie? A young man. He, he looks a little bit like Apollo. Apollo? Oh, nothing. That's my football player. Aunt Minnie. Aunt Minnie? John, oh, my dear, I, I'm so glad to see you. Hello, Aunt Minnie. How's the youngest old lady in Paris? <laughs> John, this is Stephanie, my assistant. Hello, Hello Stephanie. John. Isn't it true, Stephanie? Everything that I said about you. Those aren't shoulder pads, they're real. Oh, Aunt Minnie. <laughs> Minnie. You didn't know that that was my real name, did you, Stephanie? Well, I couldn't very well be Madame Minnie. Why, take any fashion designer with a fancy name and you'll find that she was originally Tilly or Bessie or Gussie. We all started out just as good old-fashioned needle pushers. <laughs> Welcome to Paris, John. Oh, thank you, Stephanie. What's wrong, quarterback? You look unhappy. Mm, I am a little. Oh, I suppose it's that girl. She has big ideas about marrying someone rich and successful. Well, then we'll have to make you successful. How? Go into business with me. Oh, Aunt Minnie, I'm a football player and sort of a singer. I couldn't go into the fashion business. Well, fashion is something of a, of a, of a football game. You've no idea how many ends we go around. <laughs> Oh, darn it, a customer. I'll go, Madame Roberta. Oh, no, 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 you stay here. John, you tell her about football. Don't be sad about that girl, I mean. 
You know, Stephanie, when you're in love, it can be the most wonderful thing or the most terrible. Well, that's because when you're in love, you can't see very well. <laughs> you mean love is blind? Not only love, people in love. Why, well, they can't see a thing. They asked me how I knew my true love was true. I, of course, replied, something here inside cannot be denied. could doubt my love Yet today my love has flown away I am without my love Now laughing friends deride Tears I cannot hide Sing that, Stephanie. You must be in love yourself. Maybe I am. I didn't know it, but maybe I am. Well, then I ought to give you back a little of your own advice. So I chaffed them and I gave love to think they could die. Turn with Act Two of Roberta in just a moment. Hear that? It's a freight train pulling out of the departure yard of a terminal headed for points beyond. And hear that? That's another freight train on its way. And still another will be starting somewhere in the United States in the next five seconds. goes, and there'll be another and another, one about every five seconds throughout the day and night. These trains are made up of the cars of many railroads, carrying the products of many regions, delivering to every part of the United States the things that America eats and wears and uses, delivering to the factories the raw materials and the fuel which are necessary to make these things, delivering to the munitions plants the essential materials and parts which go to fashion the weapons and supplies our fighting men must have, and laying down at the ports the tons of food and ammunition, supplies and equipment, which must go with them as they go overseas and must follow to enable them to keep in the field. Each week, more than 850,000 railroad cars are being loaded with freight, 50,000 cars with grain, another 50,000 with forest products, 80,000 cars with ore, and 150,000 cars with coal. 
400,000 cars with manufactured goods. All in all, an unending parade of the things America grows and raises, makes and uses. Freight loadings on the railroads are running 15 or 20 percent higher than they were a year ago, and the shippers' advisory boards, whose quarterly forecast of loadings is regarded as one of the most accurate barometers of future activity, predict a still greater volume during the last three months of this year. You'll be hearing even more often the rhythmic roll of the trains. The very pulse beat in the arteries of a mighty nation at work. Here's Act Two of Roberta, starring Gordon McRae as John, Ginny Sims as Stephanie, and Edna Best as Madame Roberta. Dear gang, here I am in Paris, and believe me, the most beautiful women in the world are here. There's one in particular named Stephanie. Wait a minute. I'm supposed to be in love with somebody else. Well, fellas, that deal isn't working out too well. I'm busy trying to learn my aunt's business. Now, don't laugh. Don't laugh. Even a football player can appreciate a beautiful gown, especially if there's something beautiful inside it. But it's like I always tell my Aunt Minnie. Yes, I... dear. Huh? What do you always tell your Aunt Minnie? Oh, just that I'm a singer. So I hope it won't upset the designs of the designers if I just burst out with a tune occasionally. You see, it's this way, Aunt Minnie. Don't ask me not to sing. I've simply got to sing. Two, two or three, four time. I'm always entertaining. I waited oh so long. I felt so low so long. Desire to vocalize won't recognize restraining. Maybe you will view my efforts with pain. Even so, you know I cannot refrain. There's not a thing about for me to sing about. But there's no reason I won't furnish you a song. Don't ask me not to sing. I simply got to sing. In two or three, four time, I'm always entertaining. And you can bet your eyes that when I tenderize a juicy steak or chop, I don't stop my refraining. Afternoon, I croon, then I sing in the dark. In your tub, you scrub and sing like a lark. Though I may lose the soap, I yodel as I grow. There's not a thing I do, I don't do with a song. Melody soft and low. Melody loud and strong. Melody sends this wet and dripping, daily dipping. Oh, darling, you sing any time you want to and don't let anybody stop you. The most beautiful thing in the world is music. Aunt Minnie, are you all right? Just a bit tired, John, dear. It's time to rest. Well, sit down. Sit down here, darling. You've been working too hard. Call Stephanie, will you? There's something that I must do. I've been postponing it, but I must do it now. Of course. Stephanie! Stephanie, would you come in here? I must do something for Stephanie. In, in my will. Because, you see, she'll be Madame Roberta soon. Oh, now, don't talk like that, Aunt Minnie. Is anything wrong? Madame Roberta. Well, I'm just going to... Close my eyes for a moment. Stephanie, dear, will you phone my attorney? Now, there'll be plenty of time for attorneys after you've rested. Rest, please, dear. Maybe I can. If you and Stephanie would sing to me, John, that might make me feel better. Of course. We'd like to. When you shall see of my 
You said our yesterdays, if they're golden and lovely, give us courage to face our tomorrows. Now, Stephanie, you mustn't leave. Where will you go? I don't know exactly. You've got to stay here. That's what Aunt Minnie wanted. She told me that before she died. That's why she tried to call her attorney. But the Madame Roberta Salon belonged to you, John. Now, how can a quarterback be Madame Roberta? <laughs> don't you see, Stephanie? You've got to be Madame Roberta now. That's what Aunt Minnie planned. Oh, no, John. Do you know something? 
I think she planned it all. She wanted us to be partners. Shake, partner. <laughs> but I'd be in the way. Now, what about that girl you're going to marry, John? What would she think if you had another girl for a partner? It, it just wouldn't work, that's all. What girl? Oh, her. You know something, Stephanie? I'd almost forgotten about her. Why, Chapman and I gaily laughed to think they could doubt my love. Yet today my love has flown away. I am without my love. John, quick, ask me again about being partners. Before the smoke gets in our eyes. Now, laughing friends deride, tears I cannot hide. So I smile and say, when the lovely flame dies, smoke gets in your Ginny Sims will be back in just a minute. And our thanks to one of Broadway's first ladies, Miss Edna Best, who played Madame Roberta, and to our entire company. Roberta, with book and lyrics by Otto Harbach and music by Jerome Kern, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. Last year, some 700 million people rode America's trains. As you might expect... Some of these folks occasionally need advice or assistance while they're traveling. It is for just this sort of emergency that the Traveler's Aid Society was established. Operating in major railroad terminals all across the country, courteous Traveler's Aid workers are on hand to give skilled help to young and old, to the handicapped and confused, to the rich or poor of any race or creed. Traveler's Aid is one of the many red feather services provided for you by your local community chest. By giving generously to the current community chest drive, you can be sure your money is going where it is most needed. By means of this one campaign, once a year, the maintenance and growth of worthy services in your community is assured. And so when you see the red feather symbol in your hometown, remember, friends, everybody benefits, everybody gives. And now here again is lovely Ginny Sims. <laughs> Thank you again, Gordon. It was really wonderful being aboard the show train. Well, you made a wonderful dress designer, Ginny. Well, I had designs on you, too. Well, as a football player, I made a few passes myself. <laughs> Say, Ginny, take time out from your own show, the Sunday Night Botany Song Shop, and, and visit us again real soon, huh? Oh, I'd love to. Thank you, Gordon. And say, what's on next week? Well, Ginny, we're all going waltzing to the music of Countess Maritza. And Dorothy Warrenshold will be our guest star. I'll be listening. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Jenny. All aboard. Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so, until next week, goodbye. <laughs> Roberta was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae will soon be seen starring in the Warner Brothers production, The West Point Story. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. <laughs> The preceding program transcribed. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.